I'm gonna take a leak. Good crap, <laughs> I heard he pressed her. Good morning, my brother Mark. How Good are you morning. Today? Thank I'm you for on cup number three. Thank you for joining me for this emergency session of free therapy where we can pay homage to the church of aquarium and reef keeping we call local fish stores. This is an emergency because last Tuesday I got my booster shot and it kind of knocked me out for doing this topic this week. So we published a previous recorded session about things that science should prove. And um, I really wanted to get this out um, well in time before the American anti-holiday of Black Friday, um, sales. Black Friday, Small Business Saturday, Cyber Monday. And I just really want to convince folks to think about their local fish store first for all those three unholy days. <laughs> and... Um, you know, you and I have a special connection to uh, local fish stores. But first of all, I just want to say I've been wanting to do a morning session of reef therapy for so long because we always record at, you know, at evening time. Yeah. And it's at the end of the day. And we've both, you know, done our jobs and worked and then, you know, relaxing with a beer. And so, like, this is a really different session because we're on coffees. <laughs> You're on number three. I'm on number one. I'm um, amped up. <laughs> but I thought I thought it was really important to uh, get this one out well in time so people can you know be thinking about this cornerstone of the reef aquarium community. Yeah, it makes sense too, right? I mean, uh, a lot of these sales are manufacturer based, right? Or so it, you know go if you're going to buy something for 10% off, go to local fish store and here's why, you know? Yeah. So yeah, uh, I guess, yeah, definitely it's important to mention that any any sales you see regarding certain products that are being advertised are manufacturer sales. So you can get those exact same discounts at your local fish store and you can get it now, right? So if you go into a local fish store on Friday and you buy it, you have it in your hand. But you could call them up now, right? You could call them up and... and arrange you know for them to have it in stock and then you can buy it at that price and then you don't have to pay shipping and you have it now and you don't pay shipping and you support your community and that's like really awesome but i i think we both have a lot of great reasons why local fish stores are still super important in our hobby yeah i do um and i've thought a lot about it uh even before you suggested this topic because we did recently talk about you know all the acquisitions and stuff and you know i i can't predict the future but i think you know we need to start thinking about uh we need to start thinking about the future of the local fish store and how you know and instead of you know yelling at the sky and being angry about <laughs> uh large companies making big decisions you know rather look inward and say well what can i what, what am i doing to make a difference right like mm -hmm. what can i do um to counter that or or to to support my local fish store because it's easy to sit there and yell but uh you know i wonder how many people can ask themselves well when's the last time you visited your local fish store and you know what would be the answer to that right so um we all like to shop online. It's convenient, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, and sometimes it's it's just life because I get home and it's nighttime and I've worked all day and it's kind of convenient to shop for things at nine o'clock at night. You know, mm -hmm. so I get it. I get it. But yeah. um, I have a great scenario where in, after this recording, I'm going to go to a local fish store that I know has a wide selection of bulkheads so that I can finally install the, the new generation of uh, automatic filter roll, the Clarity Gen 3 on my fish tank, because I want that thing to be as crystal as possible. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, when I've ordered bulkheads online, um, that, I don't know what it is about bulkheads, but sometimes like the size is not exactly right. Sometimes the nut doesn't fit on the threads super well. Um, mostly the size thing, right? Or uh, sometimes, you know, I'll, I'll order slip slip, so I can just glue on both ends and I'll get like slip thread, not the way I wanted. There's man, I've, I've been, especially for just like low level items like that, you know, once it's, you know, bulkheads are online, it'd be what, three, four five bucks plus a few bucks of shipping. But once it gets here, it's not, if it's wrong thing, it's not even worth shipping back. And so Aquamart is a shop I actually used to work at. They, I don't know why <laughs> they always have a giant selection of plumbing. 
funny nice. then you like esoteric um uh lock line part they have it right so i'm gonna go over there and i'm gonna go get the bulkheads that i need on a dime and then i'm gonna come back i'm gonna work on my project and it's gonna be done before you know the bulkheads i could order online it's it, that's just one example of like something that is easy to mess up but they can knock you back on the project that you're working on just by getting the wrong bulkheads or the wrong parts it's super easy to you know um, send somebody an inch and a quarter when they ordered inch well i could tell you uh you know i think i've told this story maybe in the past but when um i had a heater and um where the power cord went into the heater mm -hmm. uh it disconnected it just uh, eroded away, and uh, so essentially, I just had a copper wire that was electrified in my sump, but it was controlled by my controller and the the temperature probe of my controller. So it, you know, it kind of turned off and on. Mm -hmm. And I was at work, and my wife said, "There's smoke coming out of the aquarium stand," and uh, I couldn't figure out what it was. Right at first, like, and I could smell the smell and. And the crazy part is, like, I was sticking my hand in the... I, I ran home, right? I, I, I drove home emergency. And I was, like, fuddling around in the sump uh, looking for, you know, what's going on in there. There's this black soot. I, I think I was just lucky that the controller hadn't activated the heater uh, when I was doing that. But anyway, uh, yes, I should have had that all on a GFCI. I know, um, you know, people can yell at me in the comments. But... <laughs> Um, this thing, this copper had been kind of going through electrolysis in my sump, right? And copper, we all know what that does to, uh, invertebrates. So all my corals were rapidly dying and, no. um, I had, I ran to the local fish store and I bought a crap ton of salt to do large scale water changes. I bought some Cooperzorb. I bought mm -hmm. some Metazorb, which was re probably redundant, but I just didn't care. Right. At that right. point. Uh, and poly filters. I just was going to throw the kitchen sink at it. And the people at my local fish store, who I'm, I know very well, George, those guys, they were very concerned. They were very helpful. And I ran home and I did some massive water changes. And then I put this, you know, metal absorption, copper absorption media in my tank. And I saved a lot of corals. I saved mm. a lot of things, right? Um, what if I didn't have a local fish store to go to to do that and I had to wait a week? Or, oh you know, maybe God, I could get lucky with Amazon Prime and it show up the next day. Oh, my God. The damage would have been so far gone by then. Right. And, you know, I guess the counter message is, oh, have that in your arsenal, right? In your <laughs> reefing cabinet. But I'm just saying, you never know when you need that local fish store to run to for help when it's an emergency. Because we Even are in the if business. you're, like, strapped... If you're like a regular customer and you're strapped for cash or something, yeah, ma'am, they'll they'll credit you. They'll find a used one. You know, again, if you're a regular customer and they know who you are, they'll take yeah. care of you. They know you're coming back. They know you have a reef tank, and you know, say you have a specific uh, uh, pump that just went out and you just don't have the cash for some reason, or there's something preventing you from, from buying it, like th that store is going to, a good store, any decent person is going to help you out in a time of need. Yep. And um, so, yeah, I think we have a, a lot of reasons why it's important to support the local fish store and to develop a good relationship with them. You know, Agreed. I'm not saying yeah. you have to be like the big spendy guy that buys all this stuff, but man, you show your face there um, once a month for a year or two, you, you know, you're part of that family yep absolutely cool you ready to jump into our to our listicles of yeah, um man. things about uh, the the reef stop yeah so, i think you've made a, a really good list i mm -hmm. uh i looked at it and i didn't want to tack on and make this where we have like two minutes to talk about each thing i think right. you were very comprehensive so go for it so man everything is so virtual right now online shopping online fish stores online conferences Online groups, online forums, and local fish stores. Just a wholesome, holistic, physical place. A place you can go, you can get away from the computer. And it just, you know, for me, it's really becoming a temple of aquarium culture. And it's just, yeah. it's always so nice. No matter what you have going on, no matter if the local fish store is great or average, 
when you get away from your own tank and just go see some other tanks and then come back to your tank, you have a different perspective. You just really do have a different perspective. And um, man, I'm super grateful that I think over the last 10 years, Denver's added an average of a new store every two years. And That's really good. And the only one or two stores that have gone out of business were, you know, like people who are lifers, <laughs> who are just retiring and just kind of checking out, or mostly freshwater stores. And what's interesting is all new stores are usually saltwater heavy. Yeah, I've noticed that. There's, um, I almost lament for the freshwater folks because, um, at least even in my town, there there are a couple of stores that have a, a cool, interesting freshwater selection. But it seems like a lot of stores are very saltwater focused. Um, you know what I do love though? I love the occasional podunk mom and poppy shop that just does mostly fresh water and it happens to have a little bit of salt water because what they'll do is they'll buy like bread and butter corals and they'll sit there because they don't have like the customer base for it and they'll buy five dollar frags from whatever vendor that they get and they'll keep them under kind of really medium lighting and they might have them for two months three months six months three quarters of a year and they'll just if the conditions are average, they'll just get really freaking nice. Mm -hmm. And you'll get like many colonies of lords that were bought as $5 frags for like $20, $25 because the solar guys aren't going there, right? They're, they're only going to, you know, the cool spots, the hip reef shops. But man, I tell you what, some of these, um, overlooked, um, less inspired, uh, full range pet stores and, and aquarium places, um, you'd be surprised what you find in there. You'd be really surprised. And then sometimes when someone needs to move or just tear down their tank, then they might not be plugged into the community. They're just going to take all their livestock to the closest shop, which could happen to be one of these freshwater inclined mom and pop shops. Man, you just, you just never know what you're going to find in some of these freshwater spots. I'll tell you what. Yeah, that's true. I, I I think about back in my, even in, in my college days where I was on a pretty shoestring budget, I would hit these stores that would have a lot of um, stuff that they, like a lot of used stuff, right? They'd have shelves of it. And I mean, the amount of crap that I found that way that mm -hmm. I, I repurposed or used lighting, skimmers, old wet dries that I would use as a sump, you know, I'd rip the bio balls out and mm -hmm. just fill it with water. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, I, that was, that was sort of my indoctrination and reef keeping was just, uh, you know, all of this used stuff that, that would, you know, become available. Um, and, um, I, to your point about corals, um, sometimes that's where you find the wacky stuff because, mm -hmm. um, I feel like a lot of stores, uh, that are, you know, high profile and have, you know, like everything perfect and clean, they just bring in like the same stuff, you know, mm -hmm. it's sort of like they have a, a recipe of like, okay, we know this stuff sells well and we know this, or they try to maybe mimic what the online market looks like. Um, and so you can, it's kind of nice cause you see like these corals on Instagram or on whatever you're like, well, that's a cool coral and you can buy it at your local fish store and that, and see it in person. But the wacky stuff, right? So, and for you and me, sometimes the legacy corals, right? Yes. Like the, the wacky mushrooms or whatever, you know, like I, I always find those in those, um, uh, I don't know, like mom and pop stores, you know, where you're like just stuff that was cool 10 years ago. <laughs> you know? Um, but yeah. Yeah. I, I, you know, there's some, we're, we're going to drill down this, this list, but it's just when you're looking at a monitor all day, looking at livestock, dry goods, displays, and, and discussions. It's just so refreshing to just go to a physical place, hopefully smell a, a sweet, somewhat refreshing, kind of salty aired, you know, ozone reef smell. aquarium store. Maybe <laughs> just a touch of ozone, not too much, yeah. right? Yeah. And um, seeing other tanks, especially in person, not as much online, but other tanks in person, and seeing someone else with different lights or the same lights that they're using differently and then different corals or the same corals that are looking different, man, that nothing gets my gears turning than just seeing 
how many different ways there are to uh, use the same equipment or grow the same corals. I do that already here at the studio, but I've still, I've still got my own ideas that are that, that govern and kind of guide my flow. I'm just overflower guy. <laughs> I have so much flow, and lots and lots of light. Just that's just my upbringing. But sometimes well, you know you go to some shops and you're like, how are you? keeping all this stuff like thriving and incredibly colorful in like 20 micromoles of par. You know, like our one shop that's been really guiding me, helping me find the low end, not the, the, the lower energy end. So every time I go to Chris's shop, you know, uh, this is a quad cart. He has, he's just really good at stony corals, but because he's a shop, he's been working a lot on the wide range of corals. And he's got this one tank that's like, was it like six feet by 10 feet? And it's filled with all kinds of stuff. And he straight keeps the nitrates at 20. I think the last time I was in there, I was like, Chris, how do you do this? <laughs> just like, just, I need you to tell me what are you doing here? And he's just like, you know, feeding and all right, the lights are lower and the flow is kind of lower. But they keep the nitrates at 20. You know, that's where they keep all the LPS, the Ghanis, Zoanthids, different frags. And it just always looks like a just a dream in there. I think for me, too, is... Um you know, we're, our ideas are driven by inspiration, by marketing, you know, we're always coming to a conclusion somehow, but we're being somewhat nudged on a path. And when you're doing that online thing, you know, and you get excited about this rare thing or that thing, you're, you're on a path, right? Like what, what you want suddenly is refined but um the thing that always cracks me up about going into a local fish store is um the things that i normally wouldn't consider buying suddenly excite me because when i see yes. it in person and i see it in a good peak of health right and you're like well shit i guess i'm buying a dotty back today because mm -hmm. that thing is wicked awesome that thing is amazing i guess i'm buying around. a turban area cup coral because yeah. i can't not get it because look at it it's just so freaking healthy and now yeah. i guess you can pass on because you know that thing is just gonna just take over but yeah, yeah the the randomest piece of livestock or fish or coral is just gonna talk to you exactly. in a way that it never did in your computer screen yeah and sometimes it doesn't work out right i mean I, I remember i was at my local fish store just recently and they just had a just nice fat good looking bicolor angel right mm. and that's a fish i've always had a soft spot for but when you just see one of those in person and it's just super healthy and oh, it's, there's a huge difference between that's one that's three and a half inches and one that's four inches yes yes <laughs> This thing was, I'd say this thing was about three inches, but I, I, there's no way I could put that in my tank. Uh, I mean, I could, but it was, it was a gamble with, I oh, already have. not gamble. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you'd, pay, you'd, you'd pay a price. There's, there's a coral gamble and there would be a fish gamble because I got a few other smaller angels already that it, there'd be some war, right? But it was like, man, I wanted that thing. And it ha let's just pretend I had a, I used to have a softy tank in my office that was, you know, neglected, but I just let everything overgrow. If I had something like that and I, I had room for it, that thing would have gone home with me. But mm -hmm. I would have never been on the inspired path to go buy a bicolor angelfish being online. Ooh, ki kitty cat. <laughs> hey, buddy. Um, so, yeah, that, that's, that was like the perfect example. Like, man, it, it was hard to leave the store, right? It was yeah. like, oh, that's a cool. And it's a very common angelfish, but it just when was a good looking one. you see one looking like... Just the stud that it can be, you know, every bit of four oh, inches man, it's with gill spines with, were just oh just, huge gill spines yeah. and like you know dorsal and anal fin streamers and you're just like man that is a amazing fish. It didn't look like a pygmy angel, right? It's a little more elongated. It looked like you know? a miniature like holocanthus. Yes, yes, mm -hmm. perfect example. Yeah, yeah. Or analogy. Um, yeah, I have seen one in, or those in a local reef shop. That I was just like blown away at how amazing it was and um the other fish that kind of gets me once in a while are is like an awesome keyhole angelfish mm. which will be like four and a half inches like full grown you're like what the heck and Looks it's like big, yeah. the darkest shade of blue right you think that they're black but when they're super mature and you catch that you know you catch them at an angle you're like whoa that is actually indigo mm -hmm. <laughs> with a crazy you know white teardrop 
so yeah that's that's the kind of stuff like you could see the best picture of a bicolor angelfish you could see the best picture of the keyhole it is not going to hit you in the gut of your soul the same way that seeing one in person you know looking at you with the spines all out and just flicking back and forth you can have moments with fish that you would never exper expect you know in real life same thing with the corals and i guess to a lesser degree some invertebrates um but uh it goes I, back to that physical thing versus virtual though right like mm -hmm. that's that's at the root of it all it's just you could say the same about gear. You brought up lighting, right? I mean, I can read all the online reviews and comparisons and arguments about lighting, but you go into a store that has some Ecotex up, some Kessels up, some some Red Sea lights on a Red Sea mm -hmm. tank, and you see it in person, and you might really find yourself gravitating towards one just because of that physical experience. One perfect example that I saw very recently was at um, Living Reef Orlando. They were using, what the heck is that thing called? The uh, High Doors brand, the Akamai LED light, mm -hmm. they're using that over a Nano, and it was just like flawless color, perfect, just spotlighting. And then the fixture is, you know, super thin, and it was being suspended. And I was like, I've had one of those for a really long time and never really used it, and um, I've never seen it glow like that. <laughs> you look at the tank, you're like, wait, that's an Akamai light? And uh, that was a perfect example. Just you never know how someone's going to set up a display tank. And I think that's the next thing I really want to focus on. Okay. Because the hobby has this fetish with proof is in the pudding, you know, in your reef tank, show me your reef tank, and, you know, listen to people who have a good looking reef tank. And I feel like that's always been the case for the local fish store. And you have some stores. I mean, for me, it was always like, when I was younger, it's like, all right, let's go check out their displays. If, if you know, if a fish store doesn't have a display, I feel like they'd have no soul. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they have no heart. And now it's definitely a lot more common and expected to see, especially a reef shop, have one or multiple displays because they can actually farm coral out of those displays. Right, that's almost part of the business plan. But especially in the olden days when we were just dealing with magazines. Oh my goodness, seeing a great reef tank and what skimmer are you running? What what additives are you using? What what corals are you keeping? You know, what metal halides are under there? <laughs> That's the kind of stuff that just seeing a display tank should tickle all your spidey senses as a reefer. Yeah, all, and all of them. Again, um circling on the physical, but um in the in the sense of a display tank scale matters and if you see a youtube video about an eight foot or six foot or whatever 200 gallon reef tank it you know it's cool but when you stand in front of one it's a whole different experience right and mm -hmm. um you i'm sure this store is still around in colorado but um I've seen pictures of this tank online and uh, I've tried to you know, share that picture with, you know, when I was having a discussion with somebody, but the picture never did it justice was that hammer coral oh, at Neptune, yes. right? Mm -hmm. And it's, it's just, I don't know how big the tank is now, but the you tank know. Tank is four by three by three, I believe. Is the hammer still around? Oh yeah. She has to dismantle it about every six years i don't think it's every five years i think it's every six years she has to get in there and she is sharon she's a uh, owned and operated neptunes for 20 plus years 25 30 years or something she sold she me my that first coral by the way <laughs> yeah um th that's a great shop that's just such a great shop it's that the hammer's still in the same place and yes she has to um deconstruct it on a regular basis and she'll get it back down to where it's only a third of the tank and within you know five to six years it's full again and i mean this is an extreme example but if you saw a picture of this tank it probably wouldn't i mean it would be neat right but seeing a hammer coral as big as your desk right yeah pretty much um, you could not pick up the whole hammer coral by yourself yeah and it just um that left an impression on me, right? I, I, that left an impression on how big corals can get in captivity. Um, you set up a tank once when really long ago when you were in a local fish store, and it was um, really low to the ground. 
and it was almost like a pond, but it was a it was a curved aquarium, and you had large tridacnids in it, and blew me away, right, in person. Uh, a, a picture of it would have been really cool to see, but seeing it in person, I, I it got the gears turning. And let's let's not go as extreme, right? I mean, even my local fish store has a uh, just an immaculate red sea tank, just a red sea tank, red sea lights. But the aquascaping is great. There's nothing too crazy in, from a coral perspective. It's just a beautiful system. Mm-hmm. Not to mention they've got, I think, a 600-gallon tank in, at the entrance. But scale matters, standing in front of them. And, and then hearing about their journey, right? I mean, they had to dismantle the big one because uh, tiger tail cukes were, cucumbers were just um, uh, reproducing through, I guess, fissure or whatever, oh, or splitting. Wow. That's and they just had just tiger tail cukes everywhere that were wow. um, impacting the rock work and causing issues. And so uh, George, who you know, dismantled it. And uh, I don't know if I'm getting the story 100% right, but that's how I recall hearing their journey, right? Hearing their ups and downs with those tanks is is so vital. It's so like, it, like I don't know, it's just so important. Yeah, no, I, I totally agree. And um, yeah, I just can't overemphasize how important this now this is a message to the local fish store people your display tanks are paramount they Mm -hmm. are you know that's your your face to the world obviously the whole store should look great too but like that should be your business card your calling card people should be talking about your reef tank locally you know in your region you know nationally if it's an awesome 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 reef tank you know, a lot of people have heard of uh, Worldwide Corals, their 1,500-gallon mangrove lagoon. I mean, mm. that gets people talking, talking, talking. And then they have, uh, you know, a giant tank in the back. I want to say it's 750 gallons, just chock full of frags that have become small colonies that are now becoming larger colonies. And that's the kind of stuff that just really touches people. And it makes, you, makes them remember you. You know, some of the best marketing you can do for at every level is to have an awesome awesome display tank i know there's some operators listening right now who probably have a reef tank that once looked amazing or that they once put a lot of effort in and just kind of let three corals take over the reefscape and just crowd out everything else it can be hard when you're running the store and you're taking care of other people's tanks all the time um to have the motivation to stay on top of your reef tank year after year after 10 years and um so yeah just i I hope some of the local fish store owners operators workers um will be motivated to just spruce up their show tank if it needs it it's just so important to me yeah and for the i guess people that would be shopping online or in person you know ask yourself when the last time you stood in front of an aquarium that just knocked you out and you just said you know just change your way of thinking about something right i mean it has sure online you might see a cool video about david saxby's tank which is amazing right but seeing totally something in person yeah right <laughs> but seeing just uh and and also i think the the local fish store side of things when they execute with things that are readily available right mm-hmm. things that you could buy right like that's a yep. different story and you're like I don't have an excuse, right? They're using right. the same. They're using lights that are in my ballpark. They're using a tank size that's in my ballpark, and it'll uh, it'll make you, for better or for worse, sometimes go home and be like, "Man, my tank sucks." <laughs> you know, it's, but it's, it's a good. Funny how some stores will set up a tank with the basics covered, and um, put some red Monty Cap in there, some purple Digitata, some green Slimer some red shrooms, uh, you know, just a mishmash of corals. And then there's just kind of leave it alone. And the corals grow and they fill in. Meanwhile, you're, if you're an active hobbyist, you're dicking around with your tank all the time and you have tons of frags and frag racks on the bottom and this and all this gears and bells and whistles. And you're not having like half the success they are. And they've already finished that reef tank, <laughs> you know, a few months yeah. in and just like, all right, let it, let it roll. And you're always messing with yours. But to your point, I have been to local fish stores where they're always swapping out the corals in their display, and I don't like that. You know, I like where it's... You can tell when some shops are have, like, kind of a a cut flower situation with their display Mm -hmm. tank. Either they're not keeping stuff alive, or they're just constantly selling out of it. 
you know, a couple pieces. If you want to keep the showy specimens in the show tank and sell them to a high roller once in a while, all right, that's cool. But when it yeah. becomes kind of like habit, the show tank doesn't look great. But I feel like <laughs> I feel like we could do a, a whole session yeah. just on display tanks, and maybe maybe we should. But um, I want to get back on track a little bit more about what the fish store can do, and I think everyone would agree that it's usually uh, a great place to get advice, you know, especially if you're newer or intermediate in the hobby, um, you know, getting ideas for fixing aquariums or treating fish. And even when I think I know what I want to do, there's, depending on what I'm contemplating, uh, there's a few local professionals that I'll bounce it off of just to get as a sounding board, just as feedback. So, hey, what do you think about doing such and such in this way? And it's just really important. It's just really important to have those people to, with experience, you know, like if I ask Chris Cap a question about something, I need his feedback, mm -hmm. right? And I know he's got good feedback. So that's what an important one. And I think everyone's going to have someone in their area that they really trust for uh, bouncing off some of those ideas and getting feedback on something that's happening in their tank, something that they want to explore. Because, you know, chances are the professionals, they've been down all those roads or most of those roads. Yeah. And um, sometimes when you're in the thick of it, you uh, you have tunnel vision and mm -hmm. it, it takes the guy at the local fish store I mean, this could be the same for fellow hobbyists, right? But um, going there and knowing that they've had experience with their own systems, uh, they may have maintenance accounts that they also maintain. They, they, they are managing a lot more reef tanks than you are. But um, they see what you're missing. You know, you're looking at it through a lens and they're like, well, what's going on with this? You know, and then you're sitting there like, crap, I didn't even think about that. Maybe that's what mm -hmm. my issue is and this and that. Um, and that's happened to me a lot of times too. Um, and even in, uh, when you're building an aquarium, you know, we're entering the age where you can order an aquarium online. It's transshipped to your house. Uh, my most recent build, I went through my local fish store and, um, I thought I knew what I wanted, right. For the most part. But one of the things was, you could get the stand in 36 or 32 inches, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, well, of course I got to go 36 because taller is better because we got to fit all this gear under there. And uh, George was actually the one. He had a couple of tanks in the store, and he said, okay, uh, I want you to walk up to this tank and put your arm in it. I want you to walk up to this tank and put your arm in it. And obviously, I mean, I'm six feet tall, but where my armpit is, you know, with a 24-inch tall tank, the 32-inch stand I didn't have to get a step stool to get my arm in there, right? That four inches made a difference. And then, you know, you open up the stand and you look inside and then, you know, I mean, skimmers these days don't have to be 36 inches tall or, you know, mm -hmm. 30 inches tall. Skimmers have gotten smaller and, and you know, making some choice gear decisions in the sump area was worthwhile for me to just be able to easily stick my hand in the tank, right? Mm -hmm. And not have to pull out a step stool. Um, Anyway, it was his, his, him pointing that out, right, and helping me with that decision process. Somebody who sets up a lot of aquariums, has a lot of maintenance accounts in this area, and he said, no, you don't want that 36-inch stand. I mean, you can, but if you want more of an eye-level viewing experience when you're standing. But, again, he asked me, are you going to be sitting in front of the tank or standing in front of the tank? I was like, well, I got a couch and this and that. And he's like, okay, go 32. Mm -hmm. That was a huge moment where... Uh, he contributed to the design in a positive way based on experience, right? Um, it's so funny, right? Like someone would go bigger N nor normally. They would just, oh, yeah, let me get the bigger one, the taller one, the showier one. But that was four inches, man. Just by simply bouncing it off of someone with a ton of experience, you've got and, an aquarium that you can interface with a lot better. And he, I mean, I, my 225 was on a 36 inch stand. It was 27 inches tall. So I did learn my lesson. It's just, it's something you forget when you're mm -hmm. in the moment planning. Yeah. And I remember being annoyed that I always had to get a little step ladder out to do anything. <laughs> and that was enough to get you to be even more lazy about moving that frag that fell on the sand bed. You're like, yeah. screw it. I'm just going to leave it, you know? Whereas now I am more meticulous because I don't mind getting my arm wet, you know, or, it's just interesting. It's just stuff like that where sometimes you even learn the lesson, but you kind of forget it. But then there's the guy at the yep. local fish store that's like, yeah, mm, 
you ought to think about this. And you're like, oh, that's right. Yeah, I hated that. <laughs> yeah. So. No, that's an awesome, awesome example. Like, especially if you're making a new tank purchase and there's, you know, it's going to be years in, of, of interacting with this tank. And if, yeah, for any of those larger investments, man, like hopefully most people will have someone like Chris or like George in their areas that they can use as a sounding board. And, you know, I feel like a truly wise, experienced reefer will always get a few extra opinions about stuff. Um, you know, not so much regarding like the lights you're going to use or the return pump. Cause you know, those are going to, uh, you can switch, switch, switch those out, but the sump, the stand, the tank, you're not likely to, to switch those around nearly as much. Yeah. Um, so yeah, the, you know, the, the advice you get is going to, that's just one of those places I'm sure there's places online you can get some of that feedback, but you, they're just going to be drowned out. I mean, the people with experience are like some of these long term 10, 20 plus year store operators. It's in their DNA and they are not going online and answering those questions. They answer questions all day long in the fish store and those super experienced folks. They don't have, you know, the last thing they want to do is go in a, in a group or a forum and go answer those questions for the masses just to be drowned out by some newbies who are just like, yeah, but <laughs> actually, you know, it's, there's no time. And I think that's one of the best places you can get advice. I'm not going to get into some of the bad advice that you can get. We're talking oh, about yeah. the best parts of local fish stores right now. Um, and, uh, I feel, you know, the other thing that's super cool is a place to meet other reefers. Right. Yeah. So, you know, you have the, the staff that's working there. That's probably at a higher level of uh, experience and knowledge than most aquarists. But then when you meet reefers who may be at the same level of experience, man, you, when you start talking about, oh, I have a Walt Disney frag, you have a Walt Disney frag. Oh, well, mine's got really great polyp extension and, but it's kind of greenish. And another guy's like, well, I got great color, but not awesome polyp extension. And then you just compare notes. Like, oh, one guy might be feeding really well. The other guy might be um, dosing some trace elements that you haven't really thought about. And together you can, you know, blend the, the two things you're both doing right to end up with a much better coral, you know, and that's you and I, we met at two, two reef stores, right? We got to know yeah. each other at one, go back to the original session of reef therapy. If you wanted the whole origin story, but I've worked at, I think about 10 fish stores. So it was, let's see, super pets, aqua zoo, uh, pets, wait, what? Uh, pet supplies warehouse pet lovers warehouse um uh let's see fins um aquaria aqua zoo marine fish another marine fish and aquamart and yeah i think i've about, about worked about 10 different fish stores but i've met so many freaking cool people and i still love meeting people and first question is like what what, what kind of tank you got well, what, mm -hmm. what size tank you got? You know, how are you running it? And if you find enough commonalities and you end up visiting each other's tanks, man, it's just so cool. That is the funnest part of the reef aquarium hobby. But that's also one of the challenges of the reef aquarium hobby. We can't take our tanks with us. We can't take them yeah. to a meetup. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so meeting other reefers. And I feel like a weekend is a great time to do that. You know, at, um, at Marine Fish and Alpharetta, uh, in Marietta, Georgia, um, I think it was like Saturday mornings, like a lot of the heavy hitters would meet up on Saturday. We'd always have a little bit of coffee and some donuts and like there'd be a powerhouse discussion between, you know, four or five reefers for an hour every Saturday at the shop. And it was really, really cool. Just an unofficial meetup. Didn't have to be organized. Didn't have to be a club, but we all learned a lot from each other. And I feel like the club aspect is being almost pushed out, pushed aside for all the online interactions and, you know, visiting somebody's tank and seeing their corals in person, seeing their challenges and their successes in real life. There's that's the vicarious knowledge and experience that you really, really drives the hobby. Yeah. I mean, I remember the store, I think you worked at, uh, in Denver way back when I was up in, I was up in Boulder and I'll be honest, fish stores back in the nineties around the Boulder area weren't incredible. They mm -hmm. were good, you know, but, uh, 
I remember dry, making the pilgrimage down to Denver on a Saturday, and you guys had a keg of beer, and somebody was, you guys had a grill, like tailgate, essentially a tailgate party <laughs> outside the store. And I just happened to, I didn't even know about it, but I just happened to show up on a random day, and just people were chatting, having a good time. There were, you know, sales going on in the store, and it was just a sense of community, and yeah. um, it blew me away, right? Um, it was still kind of a com- long drive for me uh, at the time uh, to do that, but I, I, that sense of community that was felt there and, and, and some of the cool discussions I had with people that showed up really uh, blew me away. I wasn't expecting that, right? Um, so, yeah, I think for a local fish store to do it right, they ought to have those kind of things, right? They mm-hmm. have to um, bring people together. You know, even if you do a frag swap in the parking lot, you could say it's cutting into some of your revenue, but really, like, let's be real. Those same people are going in and probably buying some stuff while they're there. Um, but it's it's fostering that sense of community. And, and in many cases, that is what local fish stores do. It's a hub, right? It's a yeah. hub for that social, physical interaction with other hobbyists. Um, and you, you know, when you, the keyword being local, right? Um, the people that you meet your local fish store are probably within your vicinity, right? Mm-hmm. They're not... In the other part of town, they probably, I mean, they're going to go to the closest one if there's good competition between all of them and they're all great. And so you're going to find somebody that lives down the street, right, that you can go hang out with. It's not somebody from another part of town. So I, I think it's crucial. Yeah. Yeah, that happened to me not too long ago. I was at one of those freshwater stores coming to check out some freshwater fish. They have a small saltwater section. And there was a, a viewer of the Reef Builders YouTube channel there. Uh, his name is Sparky Mike. See, I might have mentioned him before. He's got a YouTube channel called Old School Reefer. And uh, he just happened to live right around the corner. So I was like, oh, well, after I get my shopping done, let me come check out your tank. Beautiful, immaculate tank. Very eclectic mix of, of equipment, including, like, he's an electrician, so he made his own LEDs. He did not cool. he, he had a four foot by four foot, like, island aquarium that was really low to the ground with all the equipment down below with a a giant calc reactor he got um, on closeout, uh, a life reef uh, protein skimmer. I think he was driving with a uh, oh, some curious pump, but then he was also using the Apex and then some radions downstairs, a big old you know classical refugium with actual peppermint shrimp and stuff in it. And um, it was just a very creative setup, very clean. And the only thing he was lacking is like coral diversity, just more different corals. And uh, it was just really fun to see uh, an original tank like that. Because, man, no matter how much you try to uh, homogenize the market, people are always going to pick and choose and then employ products differently. And um, the fish store also, you know, if they've been reefing for a while, they're going to have some really creative ideas on, on how they incorporate and install different pieces of equipment yeah and the problem with online is uh the visibility goes to the loudest people Mm -hmm. but when you go to a local fish store you know you you how often have we found like some dude that lives around the corner that you never knew about that isn't posting or doing a bunch of crap online Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and has a wicked reef aquarium you know and (laughs) And and also it's just a ton of advice, you know, it has a ton of experiences because they're, you know, sometimes the quiet ones are the deeper thinkers or whatever. But, um, you know, we, we forget that it's that there's a whole world of reef keepers that don't have a major online presence, but they may mm-hmm. be in your area and you may run into them at your local fish store and befriend them. Whether... You know, the, the local fish store, it's funny you have to think about that as a hub for the local community because I know a lot of, like, elite coral vendors who rely on random reefers to bring them this one coral that no one else can grow nearly as well. Um, I think that's the case for Amazeballs Ghani. There's one guy in California who just grows the bejesus out of them. Um, I want to say it was Top Shelf Aquatics. I had some crazy uh, Blastamusa wells eye that somebody was bringing in as frags, like just constantly a beautiful, you know, two to $300 per frag, you know, for like two polyp piece with orange accents, just amazing, amazing piece. And it's like, you know, that 
the the big coral guys they can they can they can grow it but for some reason this one random person um just brings in like the biggest fattest juiciest pieces and you don't know what they're doing special but that's the kind of thing that you'll find yeah, out in the world <laughs> out in the world and i think that that brings me to one of my favorite um reasons i still just adore local fish stores is used livestock because mm -hmm. you just never know where you're going to find that amazing used fish that's been in captivity for five to 15 years even a couple of years um you know if you want a wild yellow tang right now your best place your best starting place is to go to a bunch of fish stores and see if they got a traded in specimen you know the person who traded in they don't know that the market price is whatever it's at now and it's only going to be like a couple hundred dollars maybe for a fresh wild or a used wild yellow tang but same thing with the corals you know people's corals get too big they bring them in in pieces and that store might parse them out as frags depending on their inclination or they might be like all right yeah here's a giant chunk of you know pretty nice green hammer coral or 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 Monty Cap or Monty's, I think, you know, spread really well, but they're selling you chunks now for like 20, 30, 40 bucks because they have so much of it. They need to make room for their usual stuff. Right. And they can't just sit there and parse out everything into tiny little one inch frags. And so every fish store is different too. There's, you know, a lot of times there's like one dominant shop in the area, but no one, very few people have like the monopoly on trade-ins. Right, you know, uh, uh, Merman's Jack uh, Murray over at Merman's. He's just known for saying yes to everyone, whether it's used gear or used livestock. He'll take it all, and then he'll have a ton of it, and he doesn't want to sit on it. And so he'll, you know, give a fair price to everyone on colonies. I got a colony of Oregon tort from him for like 150 bucks. It, you know, it was mostly encrusted. It wasn't like all branching in every single direction, but it was a nice big rock. And so now I got like a six inch rock of Oregon Torp, which is branches just coming out every single direction. And I got another one from him that was a, it was like a, a royal teal blue tenuous, super fuzzy. And it was just one rock, had no branches. It was just completely encrusted, but thick and heavy and, and polyped out. Now I got it in one of my coral flats and it's just starting to branch out and it's going to turn into a giant show colony like in no time. Love that stuff. Love that stuff so much. Well, and there's two uh, equations to that story, right? One is finding some really good used fish and coral, but also having a place to um, uh, rehome a lot of things because... Yes. Um, I had uh, for, I had a cell fin tang, right? And uh, I had that 225, which I would argue is probably okay for a cell fin tang. But then I downsized tanks for a while. And, I mean, this dinner plate size tang, just I didn't feel right putting it in like a five-foot tank. So I took it to my local fish store and got some store credit, right? And you hear about people taking like baby tangs. And once they get to a size, right, trade them in and get another small tang. And... Um, from an ethical standpoint, I don't see anything wrong with that, right? Because there are people in the market for larger tanks and have larger aquariums. Um, I had, I, I love uh, pin, cushion, pin cushion type urchins, like Halloween mm -hmm. urchins. I think they're great herbivores, but they do eventually get big and turn into little bulldozers, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so I took it to my local fish store and then I hit the reset button and get a little one, you know? Nice. Um, but uh, I when I want to change directions in my tank and I'm like, yeah, I want to get rid of this large colony of coral and do something different there because it's a finite amount of space. So if that local fish store didn't exist, what would I do with all that stuff? Mm -hmm. You know, where would I take it? Um, I yeah, mean, your you local could probably community, sell it in your club, but you know, that's your local community is only so big unless you're like, you know, in Dallas or Los Angeles and eventually your reefer friends are going to have pieces of everything you already have. Yeah. And so the local fish store is a great place. If you're a successful reefer, you're going to need to find a, um, a, yeah. a, a stream to just keep sending your corals in. I take corals to a bunch of shops because eventually I'll saturate them with the, you know, green goblin and acropora or different branching montiporas and not so much acros, a few acros. And uh, yeah, that is a great place to just go take it in, trade it in for some frozen food or some cleanup crew or or whatever so yeah it's funny I, I had put used fish and used corals and trade-ins but i didn't really think about 
taking your stuff there, making your and, reef tank better by taking stuff out of it. And I'm, you know, I, my, my store has been generous with like credits or, oh, well, here, take this uh, uh, coral you like in return. Mm -hmm. But I always argue with them, like, you don't need to give me credit. Like, you're just doing me a huge favor by providing a solution for me here where I can um, ethically rehome these things or, or find a place where, like, you know, they can go find their next uh, place to exist um, with, you know, because, I, mean, I mean, what are the alternatives, right? And I, I'm always, I do sometimes sell stuff online when I need to get rid of stuff, but I'm always hesitant to do that just because I don't, it's much easier for me to stick it in a bucket and go to a local fish store than wait around my house for some guy to show up, right? Right. Um, and then you don't know who's going to show up. Hopefully right. it's a new friend, future friend, but it, I, I think we've all had the uh, occasional where you're like, ooh, okay. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, you know, they're like, oh, can I see your reef tank? And you're like, eh, I don't want you in my house. <laughs> <You know? laughs> um, anyway. Oh, goodness, it's so early. First good stretch of the day. No, it feels great to talk about the reef shops, and that's a that's an awesome point about taking stuff in because you we don't we don't want to be wasteful. I don't like stuff sitting on the shelves, and uh, it's just it's just really nice to pass along stuff that's already been loved and it's good equipment. And that's another thing. Again, there's certain fish stores where you can find good equipment, used equipment. Um, one thing I'd like to pick up next time I see it is a a Coralith calcium reactor. I don't know if oh, I'll yeah. use it, but I just want one. <laughs> I have an ETS skimmer over, you know, underneath the, the coral flats. I don't know if I'll ever use it, but I'm glad I have it, you know. And so it's, man, a calcium reactor is one of those things that the calcium reactors from 15, 20 years ago are perfectly fine to use today. You know, make sure the the, the fittings are good and the, and the, the pump is good if it's not just replace the pump but calcium reactor is one of those things there's no reason it can't just get you know recycled over and over and over again yeah for sure especially uh, some of those older ones that were all eheim driven uh, mm -hmm. eheim hasn't changed their design so you can just go get another eheim pump and if you had to and, and you're back in business and you right? find a used eheim pump yeah right? that's true too <laughs> just get a new uh, uh used new used eheim pump and and get her going again so i mean People, there, you know, again, with the messaging as far as like the hobby being too expensive, there is a lot of people are always getting rid of used tanks. The stores usually get an awesome deal on it. Again, if you're a regular and you need a, you want a new tank, they're, you know, likely to just pass along some of that used gear practically at their, whatever it costs them because they know you're going to be filling it with livestock and you're going to need salt and sand and rock and, and gear. And it's just a great place to kind of close the loop of, you know, ownership and then getting, getting rid of it and getting something new. So yeah, use fish, use corals, use gear, use tanks. I'm always looking, I'm always looking, you know, um, when I was at, there's a brand new shop that opened, uh, called keeping it reef. And I think it's the closest store to me now. I found um, the the three by two tank. It looks like a ten gallon tank cut down the middle. It is yeah, so you weird. That, yeah. yeah, so weird. I don't know what I'm gonna use it for, but it's super cool. And another thing I found in that shop that I haven't um, picked collected yet is a sixty five gallon tank. So not a fifty five, but a sixty five. So just a little bit taller. I've been wanting one uh, for a while, and I saw it there. I'm like. Oh yes, hold this tank for me. I'll be back for it. And so, you know, you can custom order some of this stuff, but uh, man, it's just really nice. Uh, another shop, I know they're sitting on a bunch of like pretty scratched up 33 longs. Those would be awesome frag tanks and you'd get them, you know, for oh, like man. 30 bucks. I've been looking, uh, I, I keep having this internal wrestling mental game of I've got, um, 60 inches right on mm -hmm. a shelf in my basement and i'm really just trying to not take over the world in the basement anymore mm -hmm. and so i've got a 20 gallon long little coral prop quarantine tank and then i have mm -hmm. like a fish quarantine tank next to it and but you know the coral guy in me like wants to make the coral prop tank bigger mm -hmm. and make the quarantine tank smaller and now that you can get pre-quarantine fish i'm sitting there but yeah i think if i stumbled upon a 33 long i the argument would be over i'd buy it but lucky for me i can't find those <laughs> why don't they sell those man it's a they 55 do. that's squat it's like the best tank 
They um, do. So there's like, what's funny is there's some 33s. Again, the stores keep these ideas and these dimensions alive in your head because if you're not going to stores, you won't, you'll forget about these rare sizes. So one store has like totally used up 33 longs that have been divided up. You know, you uh, can pull out yeah. the dividers for whatever. And another shop, Fish Den, they have brand new 33 longs that they want like 140 bucks for. Um, and either way, it's like it's just an awesome, awesome tank to uh, kind of build like a nano reef, but there's like three nanos end to end. <laughs> you know, I know it's like 30 gallons of volume and it's four feet long, but once you put all the things in it, it's probably going to have like 25 gallons of water in it. And for me, 29 gallons was always the cutoff for a nano. So a 33 long would be like having three nanos just within the same tank. Yeah, I so I used to have 240 breeders and I... I'll be the first to admit I love the dimensions of 40 breeder, but I, I never liked the level of bowing in the glass on them. Mm. Um, I I'm not a big fan of the build quality on them anymore. Um, but like a 12 inch tank, the tall tank doesn't really have a lot of those issues. And when you were talking about affordable reef keeping, that's what got my gears running of like, what if I did, you know, not a nano nano, but like a 33 long. Mm -hmm did some internal filters and just turned it into like a full fledged three foot reef, you know, uh, or four foot reef. I mean, um, but, and I'm, I'm sure my local fish store can order one for me. I just, that's enough of a obstacle, if mm -hmm. you will. Yeah. That I'm like, eh, eh, you know, the George, laziness. George, if you're listening, in, go ahead no, and order don't. a 33 long. If he had one in, in the stock. store and I walked in, I'd <laughs> be like, you SOB. <laughs> <laughs> I got his number. I'm going to call him would up. take over. You know, I'd I'm, be I'm like, yep, I'm happen. doing it. Nope. Yeah. <laughs> nope. Yep. Because yep. yep. then I don't have enough room for actual fish quarantine anymore. So that would be, that would be the only problem. But uh, So anyway. th this little session right here, we just brainstormed about just different tanks and the ideas that they give us. That's what we get from going yeah. to the local fish stores and seeing these different tanks. It is always super tempting when you see a, when you know you have a space in your house, and oh, you yeah. know how long it is and you see a tank that's like pretty close to that size, you're like, oh boy. You know, so in some ways, like the local fish store is also a place for positive temptations. <laughs> I, well, like, again, speaking about my dislike for 40 breeders, uh, and I'm sure they're structurally sound. It just, it always gave me a little bit of anxiety. Um, I walked into my local fish store, uh, not to repeat George, but it was a, it was a long time ago, but he had a, uh, I think it was Deep Sea Aquatics, which is mm -hmm. uh, no more, but, you know, former oceanic guys, I think a lot of them now work for Planet Aquariums, but it had the same footprint as a 40 breeder, uh, but it was even taller than like a 65 gallon, had oh, wow. an internal overflow, um, and the glass was, you know, just super chunky and thick. It had that typical oceanic trim, you know. Nice. And, I mean, I literally went in there to buy, like, I don't know, probably snails. I don't remember. And I was like, well, shoot, I guess I'm buying that tank. Because I had the stand, <laughs> and I was already having, a, like, kind of just uneasiness about just, you know, you could press on the glass on a 40 breeder, and it would be like, whoop, whoop. And I was like, man, I don't know about this. Um, and I bought that tank. <laughs> it, was nice. a, it was a bad temptation, you know. Yeah. So, so um, yeah, I know we could talk about the fish stores forever, but, you know, the last thing, uh, major thing, which you don't need very often, but when you need them, it's nice to have it there, is, you know, sometimes you're going out of town for a little bit longer than you'd like, and you need someone to, to just just pop in a couple times and just feed your fish and make sure everything's cool, and or moving a tank, man, phew, if you've never done it and you don't have suction cups and you don't have a ton of, of trash cans and reservoirs and tubs or whatever, it can be a real task. And then sometimes you just want some professional help, right? And so like fish stores, you know, will move tanks, they'll watch your tanks. Um, obviously they'll maintain tanks if, uh, you know, you're a little more hands-off Aquarius and you just want someone to kind of do it for you. Um, but yeah, moving a tank, sometimes just across town that could be a super big task but just you know throwing out a few hundred dollars just to get some professional help depending on the size of your tank obviously and how long it's going to take um just can take all the stress off of it all the stress off of it and uh you know if you don't have that service available to you what are you going to do you know what are you going to do it's true uh i mean uh two two points i'll make on that is one 
I don't use a tank sitting service, but when I go on a backpacking trip, I'm pretty much unreachable, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, and I do, I mean, I do bring um, that little orange thing, Garmin inReach, you know, for emergencies and stuff. But it's not like I could help troubleshoot a situation through one of those, right? It's, mm-hmm. like, it's like old school text messages, whatever. Uh, it'd be pretty long worded and it'd be a lot of messages to walk through somebody through something. But my wife knows the number of the local fish store, or at least she knows where to Google it. And I'm always like, look, if if anything goes just completely haywire, just call them. And even if they charge you like a visit, right, like a, kind of like a tank uh, maintenance visit mm-hmm. or whatever, who cares, right? It's, wor- it's probably worth its price of admission just uh, to not lose all that livestock and to give that peace of mind. And, and so, I, I mean, I used to put the number on a post-it note and stick it on the tank when I would go backpacking. But, you know, obviously these days it's not too hard to Google a phone number. Um, I have a coworker who, uh, her husband has a reef tank and I don't, he doesn't travel so much anymore, but he used to travel a lot. And so that was sort of an obstacle to reef keeping is if you travel a lot, right? But if you love the hobby, um, he has somebody that comes in and maintenance maintains the tank right does the water changes comes and takes care of it so that that responsibility doesn't fall on the rest of the family that is home right it's just um it's worth it for him to be able to enjoy the hobby when he is home Mm -hmm. i mean he's not a hardcore hobbyist like us right but he enjoys having a saltwater aquarium and again you know if let's imagine if that wasn't an option right that would suck Uh, if i took a job tomorrow where i have to travel every week i would hire somebody right um and this is also a great time like if you if your fish store knows you by your first name right you walk in they they know who you are and you have a relationship with one or multiple shops in the case of an emergency and they know which tank they're going to visit you know that might be a little bit more of a priority for them because they they've sold you a bunch of stuff and they want to keep it going and you know they if they've never heard of you and it's just an emergency and you don't have that relationship you're going to get True. you know a specific price not a family price but um you know like just if if pure reef had somebody in the area and you called in and their tech was around the corner he might just pop in and just connect a hose or something and be like don't worry about it. You know, right. there's just all kinds of situations that could arise. And it's like your fit, your, your doctor, <laughs> you know, your home doctor, you want them to know you in case of an emergency, right? That's they wanna, a really good you, point. You want yeah. them to know your, your personal health history. And so the same thing with the reef shop, you want them to kind of know about your tank and um, to know about you. And they'll be a little bit more invested in helping you, you know, hopefully that never happens, right? You hope that yeah. it's never an emergency, but if there is, uh, you want a friendly face to, to show up and, um, kind of help rectify the situation, whether you're home or not, whether you're yeah, home or not. Yeah. Uh, they know your system. They know the history about your system. They know you. Um, and, uh, let's say you are out of town and you got to give them the code to your garage door opener or, you know, Hey, I hide a key in the garage under, you know, whatever. I'd rather, uh, you know, like, can you please, you know, like, I got the alert on my Apex. Can you please go check out what the hell's going on? Mm-hmm. Uh, here's the code to my little garage code pin pad. I, I don't have any qualms about the people that I've developed a relationship with at my local fish store, trusting them to go into my home, take care, you know, fix whatever needs fixing because I know them. You know, yeah. I know them on a personal level. They're good people. I like them. Um, calling some random stranger to do that i i would feel a bit more uneasy about it right um yeah so they're having a relationship with somebody at a local fish store is huge it, it pays dividends absolutely for, for you so i think um i, I kind of went through the list and the uh, last thing i want to talk about is maybe um pricing and buying from your local fish store you know before the internet and map pricing and and being able to look up anything on your phone you know, on the spot um you know I, I remember a few months ago i was needing some copper and i went to a shop that i knew would have some copper uh, cooper mean yeah and i was looking at the bottle prices in the shop i'm like all right this is absurd like this is not okay <laughs> as far as pricing and i ordered it on amazon and had it at home within two days that's the exception by and large especially like the high-end equipment tanks stands all your ecotech neptune ai castle cj gear that's all should be 
very closely matched in price across stores across your area. And so there's much less of a reason not to buy from your local fish store than there used to be. It used to be that you would get much better pricing online, like much better pricing because the older shops, they were not in tune with customers coming in and price shopping right from their phone. But I think now if you call up a handful of stores and ask them about a Kessel, a Vortec, or a CJ pump or a Red Sea skimmer, they're all gonna be pretty close in price, but you can pick it up if, it's, if there's something broken. That's the other thing we didn't talk about, right? If you order some stuff and something comes in broken, oh my God, RMAs, don't even, <laughs> nobody wants to deal with that. Nobody wants to send stuff back. Nobody wants to get on the horn with customer service and say, oh, this one little part is broken and now I can't use the entire freaking thing right say you got a red sea skimmer for some reason it didn't have the the air valve with it it's like uh great <laughs> i could turn it on but i don't get no air if you're at the fish store you could just drive back over there right and they'll take care of it because they're going to sending it back to their distributors so that's the kind of service that you can get in one day and like let's say you you know received a part um late on a friday from your online guys they're already sh they're already closed you're not even going to talk to anybody until Monday and then they're going to ship some stuff out. So, you know, you could almost have like a week turnaround time to get that particular product going, you know, and obviously there's a lot of cool livestock you can find online and, but you cannot really estimate and gauge the, the health of a fish from a single photo. It helps. It helps. You can do a couple photos and you, you can, you can know, but at the fish store, you can literally like, see a big old group of, I don't know, say Antheus, be like, hey, would you mind feeding the tank? And you can see their feeding response. You can see how clear their fins are, how bright yeah. their eyes are, how alert they are to being fed. Oh my goodness, man, that's one of those things that the, the, the online livestock purchasing experience will just never match. Yeah, I, I wanted a mystery wrasse, right? And my local fish store called me up, said, because we just talked about it. I was like, you know mm -hmm. what? I said, hey, you know what fish I haven't seen around in a while? Is it just cause seasonality? And I brought up the mystery wrasse. And they said, uh, yeah, yeah, I haven't seen that on the list in a while. Forgot about it, right? Uh, a little while later, I get an email from a fish store. Hey, man, I see them on the list. You want me to order one for you? I said, yeah, sure. I go in. They ordered several, right? Mm -hmm. And they're nice. like, well, which one do you want? Huh? Nice. Yeah, and uh, it was like, oh, well, you know what? I think you should get this one. This one's been eating great. Uh, the colors, it's a, it's a fatter, bigger, you know, whatever. And I, had, I got to choose, you know, multiple in person. You got to choose and you got some feedback. Right. Um, that, that, that was a good experience for me and a reminder of um, the in-person versus online experience. And then to your point about pricing, you know, there was always the argument, buy local, and even if it's a little bit more money, you're supporting local businesses, and there's a, a feel-good aspect of that. But on the flip side, now we're talking about if the prices are identical, and there's a benefit to you being able to get it and get more support from it. So it's, it's, it's a win for you already beyond the feel-good, and the price is the same. Why not go that route, right? Right, right. It's a no-brainer. You don't even have to take the the uh, uptick in price to get that feel good or get that support. It's, it's a, literally the same price or sometimes even cheaper if you rule in shipping. Well, um, also, I mean, I think there's a uh, you know, fish and livestock and corals and invertebrates. None of this stuff is coming from a factory, right? None of mm -hmm. it is like cookie cutter, exact same size and shape, except for maybe some of your cleanup crew. And so there's a very much a, um, a produce aspect to it where you it can be graded on the spot and a fish or a coral might come in looking a little rough you might be able to get a deal but after a couple of weeks it might get better or it might get worse right so there's almost always like a, a on the spot uh, negotiation haggling aspect that you can inject into it and that, that's always kind of fun too especially if you're buying something in multiples or if somebody traded something in and you know that the value is like or whatever they put into it is a lot less than whatever they're selling for. You want to buy two or three pieces of like, I always say, give me a round number. I might not even ask for the right number. I was like, yeah, round this down to whatever. You know, if mm -hmm. there's like three pieces that are like $69, I'm like, ah, can you round that down to 200 for those the, for the three or something? And it's just like, it's almost always a no brainer. It's all, yeah. and so that's, that's also a super important 
uh, fun, fun p- aspect of it. That's a good point. Yeah. So one of the things that I, uh, that I do every year is, um, uh, on Saturday, a small business Saturday, which I'm renaming for the last few years, local fish store Saturday. I go to every store, almost every store, just kind of as an exercise, just to be seen. Um, it's a great weekend usually to go into a local fish store, right? It's a huge retail, um, weekend in America and they're going to be stocked. They're going to be stocked to the gills. I'm I'm, I'm okay not to go in on, on black Friday. <laughs> I'm okay to just kind of stay off the roads and not fight the crowds on that day. But on that Saturday, they're going to be well stocked up. And I make a point. I'm like, all right, I'm going to buy some frozen food from this place. I'm going to buy some, some flake food from another spot. I might just get like a random additive that I still have some, but I'm going to need it anyway. I might buy one frag just as a token. Um, at Todd's Tropical Fish, he's always got a lot of used stuff and fresh water. So I might just buy a few fresh water things or one used thing. But I really make a point to just buy one thing at every fish store. Because I feel like, imagine if every reefer in every market, they all made a collective effort to just go to every store and buy one thing. That'd be such a, and it's things you need and low dollar things, super glue, coral cutters, frag plugs, you know, low dollar things. I'm just talking about like 10 bucks. But mm-hmm. if we're all doing that to every store and showing that support, oh man, I feel like that's going to be great for them. It's going to be great for you. Um, you know, it's a nice time to just, I know I have probably the most of us have, I'm going to say like five or six stores that they can comfortably drive to, you know, in, in urban areas. Obviously if you're out, you know, in the countryside, you're not going to have that access. But even if you have like five or six shops you can go to, you probably only go to like one, maybe two. And it's just always nice, at least once a year, just to see what the other shops are, are up to. Yeah. Always, always super fun. Again, you never know what used fish or corals you might find. And it's really easy to see, a, to tell a used coral because corals, you know, they come in a certain way when they've gone through the supply chains or when they've been freshly harvested. And when you see a used coral that's just totally glowing and shining and healthy and really vigorous, you know, in, in its health and its growth. Oh, man, that's always such a, a cool find. So, yeah, I would really like to encourage all the listeners to try to go around to their local fish stores between Friday and Monday and just see what they're up to and see if you can just buy one little thing and uh, uh, synchronize and, and find out what everybody's uh, getting up to. Well, and even um, I like hitting stores I rarely visit, just to almost treat it like visiting a public aquarium, you know, where, uh, for example, there's a fish store that's kind of a haul for me to get to. It's a trek. Mm-hmm. Um, but they have usually a unique freshwater selection. I don't mm. have a freshwater aquarium right now, um, so th- it doesn't benefit me from a purchasing standpoint. But I tell you what, man, I get a kick of seeing some some crazy, wacky ap- apistos or mm-hmm. uh, plecos, or you know, even like they, they, at one point they just had a crap ton of really interesting African cichlids, you know, yeah. that I hadn't seen in person in a while, and it's just fun. It's just yep. fun to see that stuff, you know? Um, yeah. And, and I'm one of those people, like, I usually end up buying some little thing I need, right? Like uh, mm-hmm. maybe trying a new food out or whatever. But, um, but yeah, so I, I rarely visit that store. But when I do, I usually see something interesting, even if it's something I can't buy. It's just fun to have that visual experience. Um, you know, aside from the, the, the traded in livestock or, or gear, different shops in different areas they've grown up with different suppliers or different products that they really lean into and so one place is going to have you know a better source for let's say caribbean invertebrates another one is just going to be awesome on fiji fish uh another shop might be all about maricultured indonesian corals right and so by going to each one you know between the fish the corals and the devices and the products Man, just it's a, for me, it's just always a fountain of inspiration. I mean, think about it. I'm like surrounded with this stuff. I have mm-hmm. all the different lights, all the different corals and fish. I can still go to just about any store and always find something that I, I always want, right? So I have like, I uh, have two good small colonies of jack o' lantern Leptoceris, 
right? They're about two inches across. You know, I started as frags and I have them in low light areas so they can grow yeah. nice and slowly. Well, I was at Keeping It Reef. They had a colony that was like six inches across. You know, that would have been a $2,000 coral 10 years ago. <laughs> And they had a big old chunk. I would brought them some forest fire digitata, so I had a little bit of credit. And I was like, "Oh, how much for that?" And it was like, it was like 120 or something for a big old colony of bright orange, with bright green mouth jack o' lantern. I'm like, I already have it, but I can't pass it up. It's right there. It's just huge. I could literally take that colony and put it on top of my other colony. <laughs> you know, and it's just, yeah, no, I'm very much looking forward to this upcoming weekend. I actually have to go to some fish stores today for those bulkheads that I told you I needed, but I'm very much looking forward to just doing like a, a major uh, fish store touring next weekend. I'm, I'm yeah, very I'm much hit, looking forward to that. It's Saturday morning here. Well, I don't know when this is going online, right? But uh, I'm going to probably hit a store, uh, a couple of stores this weekend, just, mm -hmm. um, I don't really need to buy anything, but uh, it's just been a while since I've been to one. Mm -hmm. and, and you brought up this topic, and I was like, you know, I, I want to I go visit those display tanks, you know, and see mm -hmm. what's going on with them. Um, so, yeah, I'll, I'll probably do something similar. Um, that's the one problem about being uh, essentially, uh, I mean, forget the little basement tanks, right? I'm, I, I don't have the capacity to buy a bunch of corals all the time, and that's the only place I feel bad because... Uh, sometimes my local fish store doesn't see me for a while and it's like, man, I, you know, my one tank, things are growing and, you know, I'm not doing a whole lot. I do buy salt from them. Um, and I used to never do water changes. That was another reason they don't, they, they probably see me buy a little more uptick in salt now that I'm trying mm -hmm. to do the auto water change, see what that's like. Um, but yeah, um, that's the only downer is I don't always have a lot I need to buy. Um, but we all it, need salt, right? Yes. Yeah, we salt. all need salt. I buy the fish food there. Um, I buy some additives, but I'm not a big additive guy, at least for now. Um, but yeah, it's um, yeah, it's it's still fun. I bring my kids along; they have a blast. You know, my mm -hmm. my little uh, my youngest loves moray eels, right? And they oh, always have some fun. snowflake morays or something, and he's obsessed with those guys. Um, There's always a it, large tessellata at one of your local fish stores that yeah. is just way too big in a tank that's way too small that they keep selling and it keeps coming back because it's so vicious. <laughs> well, and it's, you know, again, you know, George, like I, I'll bring my son in and he'll be like, you know, hey, Luke, you want to catch the fish, you know, that your dad's buying? And normally, and he's always been like, no, I don't, you know, he's scared, but it's just, um, I'm always appreciative how he brings my kids into the fold and keeps That's them the engaged. That's you know? the future customers right there. Well, yeah. Um, <laughs> But I, I appreciate that, right? It's um, my daughter harasses me because I've been meaning to buy a purple firefish, you know, not mm. a very rare fish, but my daughter saw them on one of our local fish store visits and was obsessed with it. And so every once in a while, I'm just like walking through the house. Dad, when are you going to buy that purple fish? <laughs> nice. Know? I'm like, nice. I'll get to it. I'll get to it, you know. But um, so, yeah, that's that's all from a local fish store and visiting. And again, seeing not so kind of like the bicolor angel, right? My daughter saw a purple firefish in person and was like, that's cool. That's mm -hmm. a really cool fish, you know. So, yeah. That's cool. Well, I'm really glad we got, you know, found some time to cram in this emergency session of reef therapy <laughs> so we could uh, put out some, some love to local fish store guys. I just want to you know, uh, express my gratitude to everyone who's working at a reef shop, who's put it, you know, putting in the time and the work and keeping their tanks up and keeping the stores and the lights open and on, especially through the summertime, you know, it can get really long and really boring when you're just twiddling your thumbs and you, you know, you, you can count the number of people who walk in on one hand on a really slow midsummer day, but right now is the thick of it. So it was a great time to, to show your love and your support. Um, just show up, just buy some frags, some salt, some additives, some food. There's something that you need, that you're going to need, that you're going to run out. So, you know, use this weekend. It's, you know, especially if anyone has concerns about some of the, uh, uh, the mergers. I was about to say that, yeah. That, that are going on, like uh, all, all your thoughts and prayers online are one thing. And showing up and just making repeated small purchases is another. You know, you mm -hmm. want to show your support. You want to keep uh, your ad independent local shops that carry a wide selection of of goods. Now, you know, you don't want 
uh, the, the, the marketplace, the, the national marketplace to start getting consolidated in a few smaller hands of power or fewer hands of, of power and control, go support your local fish store. Like this is the time to, to speak with your wallet. Again, you don't have to make a giant investment, but if you have a reef tank, I'm sure there's like five to 10 different consumables that you can always get because you're going to need them. And just my final word on that is, um, as things evolve, right? Um, something is, you can always lament about the things that are lost, but mm -hmm. those things don't necessarily stop things moving in that direction, right? I mean, if you want to talk about listening to a CD versus MP3s and people lament about records and how the arrangement of the songs used to matter, right? Mm -hmm. Like, oh, you know, you want to end with a song and beginning and listening to a whole album, but now we consume things digitally and that's been lost a bit, right? Um, you can lament, like, oh, well, fish stores are not going to go out of business because, you know, there's a benefit to them existing because X, Y, Z. Those benefits don't guarantee that things don't one day evolve into massive digital warehouse or digital online warehouses where you order all your crap, right? Um, I don't want to use the word progress, but the evolution of things, like things get lost and that doesn't necessarily win the argument of those things not getting lost. Um, there's always a positive and a benefit to all that evolution. So if you really do care about your local fish stores and the benefits that they provide you have to reinforce that and 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 go do, go go give them your business right um that that's the one takeaway for me is uh i mean working from home with covid right oh well the coll the in-person collaboration and the you know the water cooler discussions where you solve a problem is going to get lost when we all can start working from home more post covid and that that new remote workforce and it's like that doesn't mean it doesn't go in that direction, right? People are willing to take that loss, right? Um, so all the things we just talked about that are great about local fish store, they only exist if we continue to to um, speak with our wallets. Right. So, Well, the other thing is I'm looking forward to getting this session of Reef Therapy out, talking about local fish store Saturday, and hopefully seeing a lot of reefers that I know while I tour the stores this coming in a week <laughs> that's going to be really really fun imagine if that was like an unofficial holiday all reefers showed up yeah. to all stores every small business saturday and it would, it would be just cool. be like an unofficial reefer in the world meeting where we can all compare notes and share coffee and eat a couple donuts and talk about our challenges and our successes because that's that is the funnest part is talking reef in real life that's my favorite. Yeah, and if you do have some reef keeping buddies locally, like make it a, a thing. Go together, mm -hmm. right? And then go get lunch after or a beer after. Right. Or just like make it a make it an event, a local fish store crawl, whatever. Yeah, you don't have to hit every single store, but you know, hit up three or four stores, see what they got. I'm sure you're gonna see some stuff. You'll be glad that you you saw. You, you might come home with you bought it. Might come home with a bicolor angel, man. <laughs> <laughs> that that eats, all your, uh, eats all your eats all your LPS, but whatever. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Awesome. Well, I really enjoyed this session, Mark. Thank you so much for joining me on a Saturday. Um, a little bit more caffeinated, uh, really up and I'm yeah, usually uh, like when we do reef therapy, I've already reefed all day, but this is a time I'm like, we talked to reef. Now I'm expired to go reef a little bit more. Cannot wait to get that automatic filter roll on my fish tank. So, um, again, I'm going to inspire everybody to go to their local fish stores, whether you're listening to this a week before, uh, you know, black Friday or a year after just, Go support your local seam. And, you know, if you see someone that's just looking at some kind of fish or some kind of coral, some kind of equipment that you, you know a little bit about, strike up a conversation. You never know. You might make some new friends in real life. It's the best. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks to everybody for joining us on this special session of Reef Therapy. Um, make sure to subscribe and rate us on your favorite podcatcher. If you have any questions and you're watching this on YouTube or if you're listening to this on podcast form, go to the YouTube channel and, you know, interface with us here. I'm going to give a special shout out to Christata Reef, who has been uh, engaging me with some pretty cool points that we've been discussing, sent me a, a nice paper on uh, trace elements in the, the reef aquarium, which I will be uh, digesting over the next couple of days a week. And uh, maybe it'll be something we'll talk about here in the near future. So uh, share that with me if yeah. you, if it's all right, I'd yeah, love yeah, to read yeah. that. 
It was published a, 12 years ago, so <laughs> no, no problem there. Right. So thanks, everybody, and we'll catch you guys on another.